I first started writing this episode immediately after the last one was published, thinking we'd be up and ready to release within a week. How wrong I was. The last month brought me to three different countries, to Japan, China, and Thailand, but let's rewind and drop us back down into the first location. shooting some models and some like really awesome locations and then during the shoot and decided to stop by big camera in Shibuya this is not sponsored but we also picked up this Lomo instant disposable camera thing and then Anne was snapping away while we were doing the photo shoot and video stuff and then so while we're here we thought well we gotta do the next episode so why not get more disposable cameras so we're gonna go inside and find if maybe one or two. There's not too many crazy funky ones, uh, maybe there's somewhere else, but then uh, let's see what there is. Check this out. There's like two Ilford ones, one is HP5, and there's this one which is like XP2, which is like C41, so I can process this at any color lab, uh, which is pretty convenient, but I'm really interested in this. This is the last one. So these were options. I'll take them both. So we just popped out Genza and then there's this like Sony exhibit which honestly I can't decide if it's more cool or like more depressing. Pretty beautiful, it's an aquarium in the middle of the, like in the middle of this financial district or shopping district. And then there's like an eel in there and they have like huge deep sea water fish. But also, it's really cramped. So, mixed feelings. Pretty awesome though. So even though disposable cameras look like they're very new, their very first one was invented all the way back in 1949. Uh, it was eight exposures, 35 millimeter, and the person who invented them thought that cameras were too expensive and people always left them at home. So he wanted something cheap and easy to bring outside. The first disposable we used was the oddly named Agfa Le Box camera, which has nothing to do with the French. But anyways, it was probably loaded with something basic by Fuji. It's an ISO 400 pack, so it worked much better in the daytime than the nighttime, but everything was also quite soft. And we have one last shot on here, but we have two hours before we head to the airport, so we're getting one last coffee and cake at one of our favorite places. Agfa hasn't made their own film for a while, I believe, and the results were nothing to write home about. I think I spent so many years dismissing Lomo that I was actually surprised that this takes pretty decent photos, with the clean contrast and actual sharpness. It does cost a bit more, but the colors are bright and unique. Next up was the ancient Chinese city of Hanzhou, although it's pretty glitzy now. It's hard to capture the scale of these cities, especially with a disposable camera, but I shot this photo from the inside of a taxi for example while going from district to district. And even for a Hong Konger, the massive apartment buildings was unnerving. A lot of the time was spent delayed at the airport or at the hotel, so took a few snaps when I was bored. The last part of the journey of this HP5 roll was in Thailand, when I used it during a late afternoon kayak session through stormy seas and rain. The Ilford HP5 model is probably one of the most interesting disposable cameras in the market because of how serious the film inside is. With this, you know almost exactly what you're getting since HP5 is such a reliable, versatile film. At least, that's what you would assume. Even though the lens on paper is similar to the Loma one, the images are far softer and show less contrast. Perhaps it's a waste of good film and a mediocre box. Anne and I were using the Contax T3 several times throughout this trip as well, and it was fun to contrast the disposable cameras against Carl Zeiss glass. Obviously, there's no comparison, but seeing as the T3 costs so much nowadays, there are plenty of situations in which we were more than happy to use the disposables. It's a pretty ideal situation for a camera that you don't mind losing, and it's ironic that the HP5 survived while...
So, just so you know, the last two people who came with me to Thailand both lost their Listen, drone. there's no way that I'm gonna crash a drone in the middle of the ocean. There's like nothing to hit. So we were on a boat and then we took off and then you know how you think when you anchor a boat that it's stationary? Actually, it kind of drifts around a little bit. So then when the drone returned home, it just sunk into the ocean. Yeah, I mean, if it said calm day, I'm not gonna let the drone sink into the ocean. It's not gonna happen. What else could go wrong? So what actually happened was I was flying the drone too close to the boat and I crashed into it, which is arguably the stupidest way that you can lose a drone at sea, but well, hence what's why there's no footage from Thailand. And um, well, even before the blood had dried on our Phantom 4 Pro, may it rest in peace, we were already on the internet looking for the new Phantom 5. Photokina did not announce it, but well, Christmas time maybe, we'll see. Back when disposable cameras were in their heyday, people would print out the photos and add them to an album book. The point was treasuring memories, not to join the resolution rat race. Even when we take selfies of our friends on a smartphone, we'll often shoot and reframe, shoot and pose again, shoot and adjust something until we deem that the photo or moment is perfect. But after three takes of redoing the same thing, with the same smile still plastered on your face, the spontaneity is gone. It's just a recreation of a good moment. It becomes almost a pastiche of having fun. When using a disposable camera, it's not just about the lack of focusing or the lack of controls or the minimalist design. Everything from the packaging to the color suggests that this is a toy. This is something to have fun with. It's no secret that in the social media world, we live with lots of facades and illusions. The disposable camera, in a way, frees us from this. It frees us from the burden of seeking perfection in everything. 